don't do anything different when we apply strategic focus to our own lives or business. We sow our seeds selectively and then we work to make them grow. As we work, we observe to see which have the greatest opportunity for success and we lavish more attention on them. We are quite simply trying to shift the odds in our favor. Edison managed innovation by putting the right people in the right place and having the best minds to support, discuss, dispute only an arm's length away. Today's instant communication, which Edison's inventions and innovations help make possible, mean that every office, every living room can be a Menlo Park. In any business, you've planted seeds in your interpersonal relationships. Watering the relationships with your clients or customers is obvious. Your eyes are constantly on, or they should be, improving the experience of doing business with you as opposed to the competition. You do this through market research and product innovation. You work to improve the quality of your product line. And through technological advances, or through the improvement of the supply chain, or on-time deliveries, you're always expanding your reach. You will work to increase the reach of existing products and look for ways that you can most efficiently reach new markets with products that are easily incorporated into your current product line. Our ability to communicate rapidly means that you can get instantaneous feedback on these efforts and are able to hone your efforts in ways that would have made Edison proud. It's not so much a global village, but a global Menlo Park Lab. But where I think that we grow complacent is in watering the interpersonal relationships we have in the walls of our own house. In any organization, the thing we rely on most often, the biggest line item in our accounting, both monetarily and philosophically, is the talent of the people that we hire. We depend upon them to create our fortune day to day. We trust in them to help us meet our obligations, to serve as our public face to existing and potential customers. We ask of them their dedication and loyalty, and we offer them the exchange of what we believe is a fair wage. It's a nifty bargain. We're actually trading life for lifestyle. And yet, many of you might agree, and if I said, that there's been an erosion of talent in the marketplace. This is because we are experiencing a time when traditional systems of development are showing flaws. We compartmentalize our talent, but people don't fit neatly into boxes. Not anymore. See, creating a culture to earn serendipity in the workplace is one of, the, one of bringing the best out of your talent and swinging the odds of innovation in your favor. Think about this. If you create a workplace culture where people are always encouraged to see beyond the strict parameters of their duties, where they are encouraged to relay their ideas about opportunities the company might pursue, where employees are given the time to independently pursue promising projects about which they feel passionate, and a culture where the purpose of the organization is shared across the ranks, supported by each member of the team, regardless of job, job title. If you create an environment where the entrepreneurial spirit of each member of your team is given your blessing? Tell me, do you believe that you will see more of fewer good ideas grow to fruition? Two great examples. One, 3M does this. 3M gives their research staff space to create. And did you know that that led to scotch tape and post-it notes? Google gives each of their employees time to pursue personal passions, and it results in new adjunct products that cost little, little, in very, little, little in terms of development, which create excitement and loyalty to the Google brand both in and out of the company. Might your sales manager have insight into how to make purchasing process more efficient? Or maybe your procurement manager has insights into sales. When was the last time you asked? Have you created an environment where he or she would feel confident in bringing their ideas to your attention? Adopting the four leaves of the model for your business environment will help you to create a workplace that transcends hierarchy. Tying in cross-functional roles allows you to benefit from the insights of tangential perspectives, shining light on opportunities that you almost otherwise would have missed. 
You have your talent in-house at your fingertips. They are a phone call away, an email, or a text message. And they're thinking every day. The key to managing innovation in your organization is to properly motivate your talent, creating an environment where your employees are encouraged to be their best and give their best. They are the entrepreneurial seeds you've already sown. And it is in the strength of their contributions that many of your greatest opportunities will take root.